Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network at UBNRadio.com. Plus this. Hi, welcome back to Plus This. I'm Kathy D, And I am Eva Tingley. And she is a microphone licker. Just I am. <laughs> Guys, Kathy just totally outed me on my microphone licking <laughs> atrocities that happened But here. I never knew that happened before. Yes, you did. No, we did. did. We talked about it on camera. When? I don't remember. I don't. I just Early I, onset I Alzheimer's. It, I'm just a, saying. I made a joke about my mic is a little flaccid today and I have to like... You had to put I'm your mouth down, down on it to like. And she said, "Oh, I licked my mic." I was again. like, "Dang it! I licked my mic again." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be one of those. I got kind of really, shows. I got really into gonna be one mic of those angling. Shows. Yes, <laughs> we are like we are just out of our minds today, guys. Just yes, so you know, <laughs> for sure. I, but it's probably because our guest is so awesome. No, it's not. Probably it is. It We're is. like all like nervous and nerdy, <laughs> like. <laughs> So yes, yeah. uh, Melanie Field is here. Woo! Star of the upcoming Heather's. Heather's. What was that? I, no, she was I, star. I, I was this is dramatic pause. So, oh, oh, that was what Heather's. it was. It was like for Paramount uh, that used to be Spike TV, which is like a real masculine channel. I know, but I think Paramount. they're like turning it into yeah, let's something hope. else. Let's hope. I know. I'm very Bring excited it. for it to come out July 10th, guys. We are so excited to talk to Melanie and about we're it. Totally talking about having a viewing party or something. I mean, we just want to. We're Whatever. just hopefully, yeah, that'd be nice. I was away, and you did such a good job, and Rosa did such a good job, and Arnold was amazing. I was very stressed out. I don't think you guys could tell. I was like, <laughs> I need my cohort. Aww. I mean, Rosa was amazing, and so was Arnold. But I was like, <laughs> this is stressful by myself. <laughs> Oh, I thought you guys were awesome. I was literally chatting the whole time. I know. I was like, could see you, but then I was like trying to like do too much. I was like, I can't. I By the can't way, do you it. can chat with us. I'm here. Oh, oh yeah. If you're watching. on our Facebook yeah. live, I'm, I got chat it going. with us right now. Yeah, for sure, chat with us. But Especially. if you're listening afterwards, don't because. <laughs> I mean, we you can. Won't. We read them. We do. We do read and we do respond. You can do that. Yeah. You can still do that. Do whatever you want. We won't be mad. Um, but I was away. And <laughs> Kathy was all I, fancy and went to NYC. I'm exhausted still. I taught my good friend Kirsten's, um, she has a production of Footloose in her town and they're doing Footloose and I was teaching original choreography like I was 24. Oh. And then And now your hips and your knees are like, anymore. um, a Kathy Deach, <coughs> we need to have a chat. <laughs> I know. It's like, I literally was with my family and my niece and nephew and I was like, hey oh. guys, no, I'm sorry, I can't really No, play legitimately, with you. my niece turned 13 this past week and we went and played softball and I hit a home run and was run, sprinting sprinting yeah. like a mad woman and then afterwards was like mm, I may have peed a little <laughs> <laughs> just, I wasn't in contact you know what I mean I'm just saying I like when you're that. jiggling all around I'm just saying <laughs> when you're it, it running can happen for your life. when you're running to make a home run for your 13 year old niece a softball game <laughs> that sacrifice right there <laughs> We'll get her some depends, guys. Let's I just, know. You send, can them send, to them to send them to send them to plus this show twenty seventy five. Um, <laughs> and uh, I was in also in New York because I got to sing at my theater department at Wagner College on Staten Island. Yeah, um, they ter- had their fiftieth, their Golden Jubilee, and you looked amazing in your Thank dress. You, you were all you. like, bam. guys, Amber Riley sailed the plus bus. I'm just saying, girls got taste, and we're apparently the same height. So yeah, it, same height and shape, so perfect. And um, 
another like friend of the show who when she comes out here she will absolutely be here yes Kathy she's gonna Breyer, be on. who was in which we have a picture of the two of you together yes we do so cute um oh maybe we don't I don't know I mean we I took one we took one you can always go to Instagram I'll put it on Instagram yeah um, Kathy will Instagram it it's on my personal for now uh at La DJ but um <laughs> Kathy Breyer was in Hairspray and doing the soap One Life to Live at the same time. Wow. And that's like a like serious literally champ. literally the only regular plus size woman like as a lead person on on like daytime TV at the time. It's unbelievable. She's really amazing. Yeah. And she won I think war. about people who do all that stuff. Like I think about Ryan Seacrest who's like doing like the Kelly and Ryan show and then he's like in LA doing American Idol. I'm like how how do you guys have a teleportation device? I'm just curious yeah, that you're hiding, jet. hiding from us. Private jets are easier. Yeah, that's true. I'm sure he's on one. I'm sure he owns one. I don't know if they own. They like to rent. They do like a service. I know, but if you just own one. Owning one's really expensive, though. Like half, I'm thinking Ryan Seacrest can handle like it. Half a billion. Like, no, like. I have friends who, are, you're, you know, they're your friends too. Yes. Who are half a billionaires. That half like, a billionaires. They would never. They would never rent, own their own plane because it costs so much money to keep. Yeah, like John no, Travolta, I'm sure it costs so much money to have those planes on his land. No, you, I'm sure. Yeah, you, yeah so right, they right. do like services, but they're fierce. I've been on one of those. Flights. I've been on one of those flights oh, too, and it is. Yeah. I mean, when you take off, it is a different experience. You're like. <laughs> Did you, you like go to like the it side, was like a living room in the sky. Though? It did, it did. I also love that, like you weren't waiting around in an airport. You no. drive onto the car. You just go. And you, go. you just Carmack. 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 She goes flies onto the Carmack, guys. <laughs> That's how she rolls. I'm really, really sophisticated, guys. <laughs> I call it a Carmack. <laughs> I make up my own name. The tarmac. The tarmac. The tarmac. Oh I know. God. And then they don't like check your bags or like do any sort no. of screening or anything. You're just like, hey. You're I'm... just all up in there. Yeah. Yeah. When but... we flew, there was like a giant jet, private jet. And I thought, oh, that's going to be the one that we're going on. No. Only two Asian people got on that jet. I was like, oh, they're <laughs> real fancy. Like they're going to, they have a they house. Might have, they might have owned that. <laughs> I mean, it was like a giant house that they f were Flying out, yes, just well, the two of them. To Asia, maybe that's why. I mean, it is a long flight to Asia. I, I have experienced I that. I it have is not, and don't want to. It I, is. I admire you greatly for it that. Is. But uh, that, so that was my New York trip. You did stuff too, though. No, what were you going to talk about? You doing? I didn't do anything except my niece's birthday party, where I peed in pants <laughs> a little bit. Just jiggling, just jiggle running, just jiggling. So ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Oh, you said you had something that you were going to talk about, and I'm not remembering, and I'm sorry because I don't know. It's, it's, we didn't put it today. on the list, so didn't it didn't happen. But guys, what we are going to be doing is having a closet sale. Are you like kind of saying goodbye to your clothes? Um, I had to go through pictures. Like, Kat, first of all, Kathy's like, "Can you send pictures? Can you upload pictures of stuff that you're going to get rid of?" And then she's like, "You're getting rid of all of that." <laughs> Maybe not. No, I don't. Should I not? I don't know. Like, no, I need to have that if you're not going to have it. <laughs> like all crazy. I like, know. What do you mean the pink plaid? I want it. Like, I got it to like this weird. And I was laughing at that. I had such strong feelings about it. I know it. you were so. And I was like, are you making fun of me right now? I can't tell. I just woke up from a nap I and was like not making I can't fun tell. of you at all. I was laughing at my own like way out of control feelings about your wardrobe. But guys, it is going to be dope. I'm saying goodbye to all my clothes. I don't want any of them. Like I, I am. Well, there are some getting... things that you're keeping. Let's be real. Some, but not really. Like I'll, I have a lot. But you a have lot a lot. Will be. But if going. you are getting rid of any of your um, cardigans, we might have to do a little tradey trade. Which you're probably not getting my rid of any of your cardigans. Are hard. I know she's not getting rid of any of them. Guys, Let's be I real. Love a cardigan. Yes, she's not getting rid of any of them. I <laughs> Because again, I tried on eight cardigans before I came here. <laughs> and I, every single one, I'm like, I could. No, I want that cardigan. Yeah, like every no. single one I'm thinking of. I have a white jacket that I might a little crop jacket that I'm. I have a couple of white jackets. That what I about that rid. white um, shirt that has the little ruffle side? I just got that. I've worn it once. <laughs> you didn't just get it. I took a picture of it like a year ago. 
then we're not thinking of the same one. Oh, you're thinking of the City Chic one. I'm thinking of a T-shirt, which oh. is really almost the same thing. And guys, so she, she should give problem. it to me. She but should give it to me. One is crew, and one is like real white. One is I'm white. Crazy. One is crew. One guys, is you have teeth. to come have an intervention. You have to come to the closet sale on June second to have a serious intervention with me. Yes, because I do have an emotional attachment. But and right now I feel like I've broken up with my closet. Oh no, you really? Like, I really feel like I've broken up with it. I'm like I don't like any of you. <gasps> so weird. <laughs> Are anyway. you gonna get rid of any shoes? Probably. I'm. I might too. I Probably. Might too. And I have tiny Hobbit feet. She does so have tiny Hobbit feet. If you are like a triple E six and a half <laughs> seven, then I have the shoes for you. And they never have triple them with the E plus. means super roundy <laughs> Hobbit chub foot. Just chub foot. As wide as they are long. And she has a. Just like she squares. has a Flintstone <laughs> foot. <laughs> Flintstone. <laughs> <laughs> like this. That's my. That's basically that is my foot. That's literally the size of your foot. That is, is amazing. Like um, so. If you are just listening, <laughs> Kathy just lifted up in a clock that's in the shape of a like a almost rectangle square, square. <laughs> almost a square that looks like that's Kathy's like foot. My oh my um, gosh! That's so what we're I may have about. a couple of those for you. Oh, I'm and the sweaty. Plus plus I need the Beyonce fan. Oh. So what's really great is that we're covering. No, the Plus Plus does not ever have shoes for little. I know, feet. I know, and they, they always also, have my size, which is great. They also have a lot. They usually have a lot of tall people stuff, and they don't have a ton of short people stuff. Right. So and Kathy is short, guys. So. I am short. So we're really going to bring a lot of variety. Yes. And we were just talking about how like some stuff like isn't fitting us at all. Yeah. And we're like, oh, when was I fitting into that? I know. I was like, whoa, yeah. this is like really super ginormous or on I'm me like, now. I'm like, wait a minute, that what is real tight now. So. <laughs> Could go either way. There you go. So we have all the sizes and all the things. Yes. So keep if you go to our Facebook page, we have an event. I'm gonna be posting all of those those pictures that I made Eva <laughs> cough up, um, even though I was outraged. And <laughs> we're gonna yeah. keep a flow so you can kind of keep your eye on things. And, and guys, we're want. gonna try to get Melanie to come. Uh, She's a singer too. Because we're having karaoke that night too. We didn't Big even say that, guys. Big girl karaoke is, is happening. happening. Six to eight. Amory, you better be coming. I'm just oh. saying. Amory had a crack in her pool, so she doesn't know that she can afford life right now. Oh, my God. Eva's giving such an eye. I am so. She's rolling her eyes so far back. I don't know they're ever going to come back down, <laughs> podcasters. I'm just, I'm rolling my eyes hard. Somebody's got to make Amory come out here. I know. We're Rich people, we'll send her, her out her here. I'll put her on my back. And send me to Penn's, um, apparently. So we're going to talk about one quick thing, and then I, let's get to Melanie. Cause she's yes, because she's amazing. She has so many things to talk about. But uh, an article you sent to me, and I don't even know how much we need to talk about it because... Well, we kind of both agree. But agree. I can see other people's opinions, but yes. And someone did post something really astute about like understanding. Well, let's talk about what it is. Yeah. Universal standard, which is known for carrying plus it's like size It's like a cult the way up. plus size clothing line yeah and it's really like simple shapes it's really chic it's um it's fashion forward but also like your staples yeah i would say i'm sorry that i had a delicious sandwich that just came back to say hello hello i was choking on it um so, <laughs> hot mess. hashtag hot mess but uh i you know it's stuff actually that i think is probably a little too long for me when i've tried stuff on oh. so i'm curious to see if they'll do a sh like, like a, a petite line yeah but petites don't even work for me because i'm not really petite I'm just but short. petite means short but you think it does but it's all proportionally short and you're not proportionally short it's just like my legs <laughs> <laughs> short stubby legs <laughs> with my stubby feet. I don't know. Anyway, ah. I I always love the designs and and they don't ever really fit me. But I don't think I've ever even tried anything on by Universal Standard. Yeah, they have, I mean, it's Danielle Brooks is the one who's. Yeah, like no, I know who it is. I just out. have not tried anything but on. I'm talking to people at home. Danielle oh. Brooks. Is, she Danielle just Brooks, who's on Orange is the New Black, guys, is, and she's in a new show too, um, which we'll talk about later another day. But um, they're doing a line. They're stretching their line. So Southward? I don't know. What would you call it? They're smaller going smaller. They're going to make smaller uh, sizes. You know, like... Because they start at 14, right? It goes 14 and up or 8 and up, 12 and up? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and now they're like going to sizes. They're going to go down to smaller sizes. Yeah, and I... And people are a little bit like, what the what? This is our brand. And I kind of understand it because like, you know, we don't have many... Just us brands. Yeah, but I also think. But I also think it's kind of petty. Like, dude, okay, yeah, of course they're gonna make all called, sizes. Their their brand is universal standard. 
I mean, like, I just like, <laughs> what do people expect? It's not like fat girl clothes. You yeah. know what I mean? It's yeah. not. It's not like curvy or anything or. You know, it's literally, this is what we want everyone to be able to wear. And right. that, and, it's great and that, that they and started that means with an underserved And that yeah. means including everybody. Being because inclusive. it's also hard for really small girls to find clothes. For sure. Yeah, especially in that style, I yeah. think. Um, and also they... I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad. I don't no, know why people are mad, be at, mad at it. No. Unless you're just, like, mad at the world in general. <laughs> I think... Um, a lot of people have such a firm grip on the 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 steps we've made, like the well, the because like I think about Ashley taken. Graham and how people were so mad that she could possibly maybe have not been plus size anymore at one picture. Like yeah. people like lose their minds over that. So yeah. that's why I think them Universal Standard having a different, you know, broadening their scope is you know freaks Universal. people out. Change. Change scares people, guys. It does. That's the. I mean, that's really that's what the, the fear is. The that's the fear right is there. the change. Choosing the light, right there. Boom. Boom. Right. Jinx, you owe me a Menchies. We're gonna go on a break. I hate Menchies. I'm never going to Menchies. You are. I'm you not. are. I'm gonna stuff <laughs> force too, feed you. It's too t- the tangy. Oh, no, you're bit. thinking of pink berries. Is it Menchies the fancy pink berry? No, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. See, now you have to go to Menchies. I, they're a good company. I'm not going. Uh, we'll be back with Melanie <laughs> after this break. <laughs> you know that 67% of American women are size 14 and above. You mean they look like this? Yeah, girl. So then where are we in television and film? And where are we in fashion magazines and clothing stores? Yeah. So we want to help out entertainment and fashion and media. Catch the F up. <laughs> Topics get hot. We want to hear what oh. y'all have to say. And they will get hot. Absolutely. I true. have a question for you. <laughs> yes. It's kind of like a dirty little one. Um, so if you had to do a love scene with somebody else famous, who would it be? I will. Oscar I'm, Isaac. Oh. Well, yeah. I know I asked you that and you had an answer <laughs> oh. like, right away. We sang. We laughed. We cried. We you got to go back. Yo, no, we didn't cry. <laughs> we didn't cry. Everybody should be able to be seen in, I mean, maybe not every single campaign, but... Let's let's try to include it in as many campaigns as we can. Yeah. Which you put? We told We're you. Just putting it in We're gonna the culture for you. We're gonna oh. get the candles. Yeah, people are having sex with us. We need to show that we're like part of the this society, and and being sexual is part of that. Absolutely. So, uh, so tough titty, you're fucking uncomfortable. Yeah. Watch a fat girl love herself. Applause! 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 Just us. Just us. Thank you. So good. Plus this. You know, Thanks for coming back. We're back. We have here a girl that we saw on stage. We did. Who's so talented, you guys. I can't even stand it. I know. I can't it's stand it. Ridiculous. I'm really, really excited about Heather's because it's going to be so good. I just know. And it's know. breaking all kinds of. Um, ideas about what the original was. Yeah. Which is really Stereotypes cool. and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, Melanie Fields here. Yeah. Yes! I'm so happy to be Welcome to be here. She has Welcome notes. to be here. I Look don't know. How cute she I, is I know. Notes. Wait, show Look. everybody your notes. You, you are so, so cute. Adorable. With the pink <laughs> in my book. Well, I sometimes can't. I notice sometimes when I start to talk that my thoughts disappear. <laughs> so I thought if I wrote some down, it would help. You are me. adorable. Um, why do you think we do this? I yes. know. Really obviously, it didn't even help us in the first segment. Yeah, because so. we were like, what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Some days are like that. Yeah, no, we had that. we literally were like hanging out on the cold LA street. That was so funny. <laughs> no, not After. we, not we. You did it too for I did a minute. For a minute, you and then did. they were like, "We're gonna walk to the car," and I was like, "Okay, I'm parked the other way." And then I drive. I'm driving so down true. the street, and these two Still are just there. hanging Still out on the talking. corner, just talking, and I'm like. Liars! You guys lied to me. We you did. guys rejected me no. and sent me to my car, and rejected. now you're just hanging out in the corner. Not rejected. We just had. We have such a connection because so both of us were. In oh, guys! Did you guys wicked. know that Kathy Deach was on Broadway? <laughs> I like and to rib her for that. Everyone does that. In if my you life just too. say Broadway's Kathy Deach, it just makes things clearer. <laughs> but I we like to Broadway. say. I like to say. Kathy's uh, Kathy was on Broadway, <laughs> but Melanie played Shen Shen as well. Yes. And we played the 
same exact we character. Are character sisters. So okay, so go bonding. one, two, three. Do the first part you have to do. The first part. Yeah. You mean our solo? Yeah. Like some terrible, terrible green blizzard, blizzard throughout the land she flies. Yeah, yeah I, put, I just put it in my head voice because we're in a small space, but you went for it. I just know that Jarvis is like always like, he has to listen to, it's me doing our theme song, sure, so he's sure. always like, uh, sure, anyway, sure. taking off his headphones. Okay, I just love that you guys did that. We did. Just, and also, you're welcome, v- by the way, viewers, by the you're way, welcome. BT Dubs, June 2nd, if you come, I'm coming. you will see yes. that this diva Sang. Eva sings. We were killing on her birthday karaoke. We were doing harmonies. Oh, I want to dance with somebody. <laughs> we were doing in harmonies. Hi, see, harmony. I need alcohol. Hi, I need alcohol. Well, we we'll get, do. We're having you know. to kill. We're going to figure it out. We're going to okay. kill a sponsor. We're going to make it happen. Oh we're making God. it happen. I'm, I'm definitely coming. It's basically I'm like the birthday coming. party yes. I haven't had for the last five years. Yes. Here. It's going to be so fun. <laughs> I love it. I love yes. it. Yes. Well, let's talk about you. Who cares? Yes. Who cares? Well, I was going to say a funny story that I saw Kathy Deach in Wicked on Broadway when I was in high school. When you were in high school? Yes, and I remember I told her this standing outside the bitter cold at the Geffen Playhouse. I said, <laughs> I vividly remember, I knew where I was sitting. I was in the mezzanine. My dad took me because um, we would drive up from Philly to go see Broadway shows. And I remember vividly, I think it was the top of act, it was the top of the show maybe. And you came out on a the side the of the stage yeah. on a balcony. And I remember looking at Kathy Deach. Didn't know who Kathy Deach was. But I looked at her and I remember thinking, but not saying out loud, oh, if she can be on Broadway, I could be on Broadway because she was a big girl and so was I. And I remember I thinking, I could do it. I was so inspired that your body was I on a Broadway stage. I, I truly love that remember story. That. That's so I sweet. That story. And then it happened. And then it happened. And, and then you, you played that. that. Then you, you made, you like played that exact part. No, truly. I mean, it's very, the serendipity of it all is very strange. I know. But it was very moving. And so now oh. maybe I'll play Heather's <laughs> yes. in in incarnation You'll play like the mom yes. version of Heather's? We'll be like, <laughs> hey. We have to do the mom version. <laughs> 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 oh my god! No. But um, so talk to us. So you're, you are like master degree. Yeah, big, like you are highly program. acclaimed. Wait, remind me where you know. went. Or highly educated. I went to Yale School of <laughs> Drama for my oh, master's in acting. Yeah. Graduated in t- 2016. Yeah, so you're in two Yale-y. years now. You're yeah, major. Yale-y. That's major. Yeah. I wanted to be a master, you know. So I just thought. I- <laughs> I, love <laughs> I wanted to learn more about acting and I love found that. you. No, no it's it incredible. Great. And so then you go from that to theater, and yeah. then this television thing happens. Yeah, so it was weird. I so I did undergrad. I did music. I was a musical theater performance vocal major. Then I did Broadway. So I was doing the musical theater singing thing. Then I went back to Yale to do straight acting. And then my first job really out of Yale actually was Heather's. So then I started doing TV. Oh. Um, which I wasn't expecting at all, <laughs> but um, I auditioned for Heather's in October, right at, the October after I graduated from Yale, and that's when I got the pilot. So that's pretty much what I've been working on since. Let's uh, with walk the us through it because I mean I'm from a generation where Heather's was on cable all yeah. of the time. I mean, memorize your greetings yeah. and salutations. Yeah. Like I was obsessed with him, the like all thing. of it. Sure. So walk us through your process. I mean, do you when you first got the material, were you like, oh? this is different and like something that we, yeah. we all just had this conversation guys let's just break down we had this conversation about like what we usually go out for yeah. our big girls auditioning yeah. here in Hollywood um just mad at them just mad, mad at everybody just, Kathy's just but, mad um but so so obviously this part is not per huge yeah no it was a total unicorn it really was I mean I like I said I'd only been auditioning for a couple months post graduate school and um my manager was being really selective about stuff that he was sending me out for and he sent me the script and he was like I really want you to take your time on this watch the original take your time you know get me a tape in a couple days because I was in New York at the time and I read it and it was one of those things where like I read it and I was like oh I get this girl like I totally get her not only because I had the original to reference but even like the new things that they brought to this character I was like this is very me um but not necessarily, like, I'm more Heather now than I was then, because I think Heather has, like, changed me a lot in oh. terms of my journey to self-love and fat acceptance. But at the time, I remember just being like, yeah, I'm, I've got this. I, I feel like I know this girl. Right. Um, and I was excited, because I had been going out for a lot of stuff that was either, if it was in the plus-size world, if she was described as fat or plus-size, it was like, I'm sad and I'm fat and yes. everyone's mean to me. And so it was amazing to get this role that was like, oh, I'm fat. 
don't have if you have anything to say about it, watch your mouth. Like she just so walks through life with so much power. And I was like, this is really cool. So yeah, I auditioned for it. I put myself on tape for it. Um, and it was so funny. I always tell this story. Like I had another audition that same day. And I spent a lot of time on the other one. And then I remember being like, I just have to bang out this Heather's audition really fast. Really, really fast. Can we just throw this up on date with my friend? Because um, I did. I just felt like good about it. I just felt like I understood it. And then it was a really quick turnaround um, from the time I taped to the time they offered it to me. It was like maybe a week. Wow. Um, did were, you ever have to do like the whole testing like in front of no, everybody? So they were going to fly me out to test uh, for the for the role. But I also happened to that week get really far along in another um casting that I had gone in for and so Heather's was a little worried about you know like the I guess the timing of that so I just ended up having like a lunch with Leslie Headland, who's a director nice. and we had a lunch and then by the next day they, they offered me the role which was amazing so I got yeah. off the tape which never you know you never no, think you that's never gonna happen no, no. You and, and like, like Sebastian oh, Arcelis are the only two people I've ever met that that has happened to and that's everyone kept amazing. saying to me like this doesn't happen and I was like okay because I don't know I didn't know at the time I was like okay um, yeah, and so I just I got the role, and within a month I was out in LA shooting the pilot, and it was amazing and so fun. That's so, so do cool. you identify as like a fat person, or do you like because that word is so we often ask our guests that because it's such a like a hot word. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's almost like a bad word to some people. So yeah. do you do you use that word to describe I yourself? I do use that word to describe myself. It's new in my life. Mm. So getting Heather sparked a really intense year of my life journey in terms of my relationship with my body. So, um, like when I got the call that I got Heather, I was like on a liquid protein shake diet and doing like six soul cycle classes a day. Um, I've always been on a diet like my whole life. Um, in different iterations. I've, if it's, if it's out there, I've tried it. Um, I definitely had this idea in my head and it's not crazy um, because it's what the world would like me to think that I had to be smaller to be successful. Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to get as small as possible, um, as quickly as possible, because I just didn't believe that there was a place for me in TV and film at my, the size that I was. And so when I got Heather's and even the EP who I love dearly called me and was like, you're perfect. You're amazing for this. You're coming out, you know, to LA. Don't do what a lot of people do and lose a bunch of weight. Cause mm. it's, one, it doesn't work for the role. And two, like, you're just so perfect the way that you are. And I was like, <laughs> I'm, like I'm sorry, exactly. can you just say that again for me? Well, you'd <laughs> think, but honestly, it like freaked me out because I didn't know what to do. I was like, oh, okay. Well, I don't know how to exist without trying to lose weight. I mean, I truly do not know <laughs> yeah, how to right, exist right. without trying. No, I have we... always been trying to lose weight. I will say that I get that completely. Because it was actually I, depressing. I've, <laughs> I've never... Yeah, it's I've hard. never ever thought until we started doing this because even at the beginning of us starting this, I had sort of got like intellectually realized how insane it all was. Yeah. But I, but it really took me time to be free. So I, I mean, every diet, I always say to everyone, I'm like, you need to know anything about nutrition? I will tell you. I am the queen I of it. Yeah. I yeah. Yeah. I'm better I know. than a nutritionist. I know all the combat food combinations. I know. What's the release of good vitamins? What's I mean, I know that was all me. of it. Right. I mean, yeah. it still is because I, I mean, you ask any that, fat girl, yeah. I think that she knows yeah, because sure. we've done it all. But I was always kind of torn because I always felt like there were two, there were two people in me at the same time. There was the the girl who's like actually quite confident, looks in the mirror and is like, that looks good doesn't really ask for permission in life, like is well liked, has had some success. And then there was the part of me that I guess was what the, I couldn't tell if it was internal or external. I think now I realize it's external. It was like the culture was telling me that I was wrong. Mm. And I really, really internalized that. And mm. so it was like, I believed it as much as I believed that I was worthy. I believed I was unworthy. It was a very strange Wow, dichotomy. such a dichotomy, yeah. And, um, and I never really knew who the real me was. I went to a lot of therapy being like, who's the real me? The confident one or the one who hates herself? Like, I couldn't figure it out. And then Heather kind of forced me to face it. And what was cool was I started so I started doing research for Heather because I was like yeah it's me but it's also a lot of other people I think and so I started looking up like fierce fat girls on Instagram or I like love on it. Google and, I and was you like, came across at plus the show no but really I couldn't <laughs> believe it I was like these people exist I mean it was like huge I mean I it's like it changes your life when you see all these girls who like just are fierce I and are just like shocked. this is my body I because I felt so alone and I was like oh I'm so not alone there are so many amazing 
women out there who are fat or identify whatever they identify as and are just like doing the damn thing. And so I changed my entire Instagram, flooded it with only images of fat women. Love it. I love it. I read every fat positive book under the sun, (laughs) every article. I mean, I just saturated myself with it. And by the time we went to go shoot the series, I felt like I had done like a lot of healing and finally felt like I, I was able, like had the permission to just be that version of myself that loved herself and it was a really kind of intense journey but and and then I was reading Shrill Lindy West's book and she said and this is what I wrote down one of my notes she was like uh you're for body acceptance here are the tips one look at pics of fat women on the internet till they no longer make you uncomfortable Mm -hmm. totally what I did and two which is optional wear a crop top until you forget you're wearing a crop top and I love (laughs) crop tops now like ask anyone my whole wardrobe is crop top oh my gosh that's amazing I don't I cannot wear a crop top I cannot do it oh yes you can I do it but I usually do it with like higher waisted things but I like wear it off no but can you wear a crop Top with not wearing a higher waist thing. Um, I don't. I, I'm like we've talked about before. I am of a certain age and where that feels wildly inappropriate for me. Right. So I don't feel like it's appropriate for me either. I but a crop top. To who says you have to wear a low waist with a crop top? Wear a high waist, but the crop top is like kind of a magical yeah, thing. It's fun. I have not worn a crop top. I might have to get one at the plus. I West. think you might need to. <laughs> it's really the crop top really changed. Heather wears a lot of crop tops. That also helped. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, oh, free the belly. Like she's out. It's so funny because today when I was <laughs> free the belly, I love it. I was, hashtag free the belly. Yes, hashtag I was free the belly. looking at people to repost today because we always repost. We just like want everyone to see yeah, everyone yeah. all the time, and I. I, I think maybe, obviously, I was influenced by all of your Heather photos, um, which are just amazing. We're going to talk about the styling in a second. Yeah. Yes. But all all of my pictures today sort of did have this, like, what? Like, confidence. Like, so? Mm-hmm. And I, I really think that was because I was lured in by that feeling of the photos from yeah. your shoot. It's incredible. Talk about the styling. Like, yeah. I mean, it's, it's amazing. The photos of, that you have gorgeous. are gorgeous. It took us a while doing the pilot to find that look, that first look that you see her in with the pink. Um... Oh, we're looking at a photo of it right now. Oh, are you? It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It took us, it took us a minute because um, we just really wanted to get it right. And, and it's, it's like, that sort of conf- the way you wear the clothes is more the confidence than the clothes themselves. And so we just went to like the costume designer, Aubrey, was like really, really into making sure that I felt amazing in everything because then it didn't really matter what right. I was wearing. Because right. it shows, it shows when you wear something that you feel good in, yeah. like your pit, you that just shows. It just I feel like, like you feel it, like yeah. you're like, yeah. yeah. And we could tell like in the fittings when something was like okay, and then when something just like lit was rocking, like, yeah, lit me up. yeah. Um, and she was so patient and really took my input and it, it ended up feeling and I think she would agree like a real collaboration when we go into fittings for an episode or she'd say I think it's time for this item what do you think and we'd try it on and it was so fun it was so fun but to did wear she clothes. did she buy did she pull clothes for you that were in your size she never yes. like once like brought you an eight she pulled clothes that were in my size um if we ever had something that was smaller it was because she really liked the material or something but then she would tailor it to my body. Like so deconstruct it. Deconstruct right. it yeah. or figure it out, yeah. So, no, I didn't have to go through the painful process of trying on, like, clothes that were way too small for me. Although, Heather sometimes wore clothes, like, a size down because she likes it a little tight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, in, with the exception of that. But, right. um, no, everything just, like, looked and felt really good. She did an amazing job shopping for the clothes. That's and, great. Um, and, yeah, it was just so fun to create it with her and find the right looks. And I love it. I, 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 my favorite day ever on set was every day on set was walking to set for like first rehearsal or something and for the whole cast and crew to see what I was wearing that day. <laughs> like, I like, know. Yes, yes. <laughs> tip, check me tip, out. Like, it's pretty tip. great. Yeah. Yeah. You're it's like, really and fun. my belly's out. Oh, belly's out. Free the belly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Husky slay. Is that what you said last week? Yes, hashtag yes. husky oh slay. My yes. This is my new favorite. <laughs> hashtag much. thank you Arnold Mint. Um, we're going to take a break and then we're going to come back with hot topics. Are okay. you ready? Ooh. I'm so ready. So guys, ask us your questions. I'm on it. Ask Melanie your questions, the pluses. <laughs> you know that 67% of American women are size 14 and above. You mean they look like this? Yeah. So then this where are the right we in television but that's and okay. film? And where are we in fashion magazines and clothing stores? Yeah. So we want to help out entertainment and fashion and media. <laughs> Catch the F up. <laughs> Topics get hot. We want to hear what oh. y'all have to say. And they will get hot. Absolutely. I have a question for you. <laughs> yes. It's kind of like a 
dirty little one. Um, so if you had to do a love scene with somebody else famous, who would it be? I will. Oscar I Isaac. Oh, hey, well, I, no, I asked you that and you had an answer <laughs> like, right away. We sang, we laughed, we cried. We you actually gotta go back. Yo, no, we didn't cry. <laughs> we didn't cry. Everybody should be able to be seen in, I mean, maybe not every single campaign, but Let's let's try to include it in as many campaigns as we can. Yeah, Would you put? We told We're you. Just putting it We're in the cold train for you. We're gonna oh. get the candles. Yeah, people are having sex with us. We need to show that we're like part of the this society, and and being sexual is part of that. Absolutely. So, uh, so tough titty, you're fucking uncomfortable. Yeah. Watch yes. a fat girl love herself. Applause! 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 Just us. Just us. Thank you. Thank you. So um, good. Plus this. Are we doing faces? We're doing faces. <laughs> and we're, we're, we're like, hey, we're hey back. Guys, I don't have show. my headset, so I can't hear anything. And Jarvis is being really great. And I know. Like, he's like, and frozen. you need to talk. He's like, wait till and, I point. And you need to talk, Kathy. <laughs> Kathy, you need to talk. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm getting a huge coffee, which I don't even drink. No, after Kathy this. does not drink coffee. Um, okay. Well, we're talking about fashion, which is so perfect yeah. because this story came out, and I literally, like, Blood was boiling. It almost was the plus this bitches, but we're gonna be cool. I'm I was not. I was not as boiled as Kathy Deach was. I rarely are you. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so I don't go sure. Delco. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, that I, happened. I, uh, so I'm from Delaware County, and there's something I'm familiar. called. I'm Del- from Montgomery County. Going Delco. Delco. Yep. Yes, it's about getting really mad about something usually, and your voice gets really high. Um, I've experienced uh, <laughs> not directed towards me, not directed towards me, Thank towards you. somebody oh. else, but I experienced the wrath <laughs> she did about the other person. So, um, there's this great subscription clothing brand called Stitch Fix, right. and. You know, they pick out clothes for you and just send it off. It's like every month you pay like a subscription rate or whatever. And then if you and they keep- like style you, yeah. right? So then they send you clothes and then you you either keep the clothes or you send back stuff that you don't like. Right. And it's one of the ones that does the best yeah. business and is known as sort of being like a fashionista. But it's not one. really known for plus size girls. Right. It's not really known in the plus size the, sphere. Definitely Dia and Company, I think, has Dia that. and Gwynnie B. Yeah. Which Gwynnie right, B is Gwynnie not B. a subscription, but it's, you can, yeah. it's different. But yeah, yeah, but it's still a mailing thing. Um, So they have gone to Carl Lagerfeld, or maybe Carl came, Uncle Carl came to them <laughs> to do Carl. a plus size line. And right. I was like, don't we remember all those horrible things? The he horrible, said horrible things that he said about, about fat people. girls and about how they don't deserve clothes. Literally, like, this do is we what, not remember that. I, I pulled this from an article yes, that was a UK uh, article that was about women. Uh, no, I'm sorry, women in France suing him for what he said because they were like, "It's slanderous, and you're ruining our lives." From what you said, this is some of the things he said. Uh, during the October 4th episode of Le Grand 8 on French TV, Lagerfeld used fat peop- accused fat people of being responsible for a deficit in France's health care system. The hole in Social Security is also due to all the diseases caught by people who are too fat. Caught by people. Caught. He also reiterated his previously stated view that nobody wants to see round women on the catwalk. I'm going to beg to disagree because... I want to see him. It's I want to see him. Really weird. Uh, my thing is like, then why does I then? If that's how you feel, then right? what's the turnaround about? And I guess we have to live in a world where everyone's entitled to their opinion, even though that's a very harmful opinion to have. What's the then? Why make plus size clothing? For and why a, a make group plus size clothing that, you, that just like sucks? I mean, it yeah, really, like it's you really it really bad. It's, it's pretty. Bland. It literally yeah. there there is like an oversized boxy t shirt with the Eiffel Tower on it and his that signature. I definitely saw and maybe bought in nineteen ninety five yeah. in the pajama section of like Walmart. A dress for less. <laughs> like literally It doesn't make any sense. Like, no, it's so be, terrible. It's all it's also And it's bad. like and it's like wanna be I mean, I just like old lady clothes to me. It was yeah. not cute, it was not stylish. I was kind of like I expected more from you. Oh well, I I don't because he doesn't care. He's not interested. No, interested. no I get interested. that. But yeah. but if you are if you still are Carl Lagerfeld, right? I expected more from you. Yeah, 
for sure. Is what I mean. Yeah. I don't mean that I expected more from him for a fat line, but I expected more from you yeah. because of who you're, of who you're rep- yeah. who, what your yeah. reputation yeah. is. What you say you are. Yeah. I think they're all hacks, honestly. I think that they've been skipping by on this make everything square, make yeah. everything for a square body. They don't know how to tailor anymore. And it is. And yeah. your market is suffering because you are not, yeah. because you are so narrow minded about size. So you're not selling clothes anymore. Okay, but okay, so uh, just to play a little bit of devil's advocate so universal standard went down right and we're like whatever no big deal and now he's going up and we're mad but that's so- because he's made public statements shaming fat people and shaming the people who will who he wants to buy these clothes right no i totally get that but does he not get the opportunity to learn like could right. this not could this not have been an opportunity for him to learn totally. i'm still thinking that his clothes suck but like ah. could this have been an opportunity for him to learn and go oh like they actually do deserve to right. get if any of the, so you happened. know what? God bless. If any of the marketing material ever said anything like that, that he had some kind of come to Jesus moment, other than his pocketbooks are emptying, come to and fat maybe Jesus. they're yeah. maybe they're selling his shit out of his home or whatever the fuck is happening over there. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? Delco, like Delco. this is clear. This is yeah. clearly. A response to the market. Right. It's not a response from your aesthetic, for sure. No, for and sure. And you're not like making. You gotta make amends for this shit. Yeah, he should make. That's he, the yeah. part that needs to be there. You need to make amends for literally slandering an entire country of fat people. Do I know how to trigger Kathy D? Ooh! No, she's right. She. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I, I just. But and Kathy wants everybody to boycott, boycott. them. Boycott Kathy's like, boycott Go to Tia and Company. They're amazing. They have amazing stylists. Rhea is yeah, one of Yeah, they have really great things. I mean, the thing is, we should. there should at least be some recognition of the comments that have been made and the inclusion of him in the line. I just think, yeah, I think if, if, if what you need is for fat women to buy these clothes, then he should be making amends for what he said. Because yeah. I can't. Imagine. I mean, how old is he? Ninety? Oh, it's I like this person is He's not looked ninety going, I mean, for like thirty years. So who the I don't hell know. Is? Yeah, he just and also and people were saying that he was like plus, like plus size himself. Like he was heavy and then lost all this weight and then all of a sudden was like it's it's useless being fat i was fat well, he's internalized mm, obviously fat, yeah, yeah no i'm obviously. sure yeah. but i well, and in the fashion industry it's it is such a like stigma to be to have any sort of curve you know like they want their models to be like a stick because literally like a walking hanger i do not know i mean i i guess i do know because the fashion industry i think thrives on on maintaining a level of exclusivity either through price or through size but it's like there are like there are so many plus size women in this country who want to look and feel good why wouldn't you want to make money off of, if it's yeah. just about money why wouldn't you want to make money off those people yeah, for sure but because i also they're think stupid. but i also think that it is it is a talent. You have to know how to drape. Right, it's not just like add an inch, add an inch. You like can't, normal. you can't add two inches and no, then it's all good. It doesn't, it doesn't work, work that like, way. Like you have to know how to drape. And and schools, by the way, haven't been teaching it. Right. They're just coming around to it because students are forcing them to. Right. And because students know where the money is, and they're not foolish. And that's who we should be looking at. Are these new designers? I honestly, right? think, like honestly, like I think we do have to make like. How do we make movements forward in the plus size community when stuff like this happens? I think we do have to take our wallets and For make sure. statements because I don't think Stitch, I can't even say it, Stitch Fix thought this through and shame on them. Like, you don't deserve my money if you don't think about your customer and you don't go that far forward. So we do have to say, you know what? I had the thing with you and now I'm not gonna and whatever. But like, especially when all of your marketing material is like, isn't this amazing? And I'm like, are you kidding? Yeah. Amazing that there is a size that with his name on it that fits me? Um, yeah, yeah, that's about the only thing that's amazing after someone says they don't deserve to be on a runway. They don't deserve to be human beings yeah. really is what yeah, it comes down to. Yeah. Like they don't deserve to have clothes. They don't deserve to have health care. Yeah. So I, mean, I think I think that I would like to see a movement. And I you know, when you have like a Gabby Fresh with Prem Plus Prem Us, I always do that. I want to call it Prem Plus and it's not it's Prem Us. Okay. But and even um Matthew who's gonna be on our show in a couple weeks. Yes. You know, I, I, we're just there are people out there making right. clothes specifically for you that yeah. are hot and w- do belong on and the catwalk. do they do make a, a crop top. Oh, yes. They make a great crop top. Yes. You're, Prem, you're talking about, right? 
Yeah. Yes. Oh, like, yes, but, but Matthew, Matthew, too. I, oh, his oh, last Robinson? name. Robinson? Robinson? It starts with an R. Oh. Forgive me. Boo. Hiss. We're going to post it. We've posted about him before. Because I Probably, went to, yeah. I went to you the went and saw him, yeah. Anyway. Anyway, guys. Hot messes and dresses hot today, messes. but we're moving forward. Um, um, hot topic. Yeah. Hot topic. I literally wrote, here's the boring ass collection. I, I loved that. Yes. That was my favorite part of the, of the memo. Anyway. Here's the boring ass collection. So, um, as theater gals, I'm yes. sorry, Eva. I, we don't want you to be out of this i'm sure you have opinions i'll just take a snooze but um um and said it could have been great but he didn't try and that's true carl he really did not try boo um so in the theater community i just was in new york and talking to a lot of my friends and um you know there there are people who are putting plus size actors in shows but more and more it seems like they're not Mm -hmm. and the one that really is bothering me uh, because probably it is very similar in what Footloose was yeah. when I did Footloose, um, is Mean, mean Girls. Girls. Yeah. And it's very Heather-esque, actually. Mm-hmm. And um, It's like Heather's for the aughts. Was it, did it come out in the early aughts? <laughs> for you. It's Heather's for you. <laughs> for millennials. Um, millennials. <laughs> I, am less, I am less of a millennial than this one. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. <sure. laughs> You know, Mean Girls is based on these three girls taking on this new girl and trying to make her as fabulous as they are. But when you have a stage where everybody looks alike, except for like one ensemble girl who might be a six instead of a two, Mm -hmm. there is a disconnect there. And I'm wondering, I feel like it started back when movie companies from Hollywood came and started producing musicals on Broadway. Mm, I'm and sure. they brought their yeah. Hollywood aesthetic with them. Because our guest next week, Amanda Look Le- Court. Look no, LeCount. LeCount. Oh my God. Amanda LeCount. I don't know if you know her. She's this amazing, unbelievable yeah. good pop girl. I follow yes. her on Instagram. Yeah. yeah <laughs> no. She's gonna be our show. Oh my God. She's her so amazing. Excited. She's unreal. To watch it. And she could be in any Broadway show. She yeah. also sings. So like but why aren't we seeing her? Why isn't it's she? It's strange in it? because I, you know, growing up loving musicals and and seeing a bunch of musicals and like I mentioned, Wicked. When I was going to musicals in high school, I saw I was fortunate enough to see Hairspray, which was like a unicorn in of itself. That the lead of a musical was a fat girl. Yeah, and making and out then with guys. Uh, yeah. yeah, and making out with guys and like sexy. Yeah. I remember being like Tracy Turnblad is like full sexy yeah um at least for me and um, <laughs> and then wicked i remember i was like oh there's like there's like a fat girl track in wicked okay cool but other than that i was like kind of grasping at straws and i remember thinking i think that's part of why i had this idea in my head of like gotta get smaller gotta get smaller and i felt the heat when i was pursuing musical theater um, not even film and television yeah i felt the heat by the way i did too when i was in a show yeah. i for sure dropped like 30 pounds I went down to a size 10 at one point. Well, it was because I was trying to be the alphabet standby. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, no matter how talented you are, I'm still 5'2 and, and curvy as F. So, you know what I mean? Like, so they, they couldn't get beyond the archetype. Right. And, so, and that's fine. But there's a lot but of I archetypes still, in theater. But I still theater. wanted it. You still, but what yeah. I don't understand is that in theater, in, in theater, what I love about theater is that anybody could play anything. Like, they, they, you suspend disbelief in theater, right? Like, there could be a black bell, and everyone would be like, great. But, like, you can't have a fat bell? Like, you can't have a fat character? Like, I don't understand why that in theater is such like a... When everything else yeah. is, you can suspend disbelief. It's You'd think you can suspend disbel- disbelief, but I do not think that that's the case for... A fat body. The fat body in musical theater. I really don't. Yeah. I mean... I let's see. I did Phantom of the Opera. I was in the ensemble, and I wore costumes that existed already. So there was obviously someone my size in Phantom before that time. And then I did Wicked, the Fat Girl Track, and Wicked, and then I did. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm calling it the Fat Girl Track, but it's like Shen Shen. It's like the Fat Girl Track, right? Girl, it is. <laughs> it is. It's I mean, like you straight can up call the it the Deech Track, but it's it's that the Deech Track. It's the, the Deech Track. It's also the Fat Track. It's I love okay. it. And then in Evita, <laughs> I was in the ensemble in Evita too, and um. And again, like my part wasn't about being fat. I just was a bigger human being on the stage. Um, so in that sense, I, I feel like I had, I was welcomed, you mm-hmm. know? But yeah, a lot of the lead roles, a lot of, even when revival, sometimes I think about it. I'm like, why not? Yeah. I mean, why not? Yeah. If you have a fiercely talented actress, singer, who's big, why not? Yeah. Why, what's even, why is what's that? What's even happening, too, in this, uh, they're doing a revival of um, Secret Garden. And I went, 
right away to go see who the hold on the Margaret Maggie whatever yeah, yeah, her yeah. name is and I was like oh a traditionally heavy set because that's how she's written in the book it was a thin black girl and I was like wow like we just can't have nice thing like what is going on no I mean that's the thing though like definitely in TV and film like I told you that I was very very disappointed about a ready player one yeah. did, did you read that book perchance no okay so I love that book both of the main characters in it are plus size girls and I mean first of all the movie is nothing like the book but specifically the characters the both of the female characters are supposed to be plus size girls and neither one of them is and I just don't understand it like it's I don't understand strange. why why we're not allowed to be the love interest. Like, yeah. we're not allowed to be viewed as, like, desirable. Yeah. That, and on top of it, now, on Broadway, we're not even allowed to be the mother. And that was the yeah. thing. You know, Lisa, um, who is in uh, the Parrot Head musical, oh, my God, uh, help me, somebody. What is me. it? What is it? I don't know. Uh, the, um, the Parrot Jimmy, Head? The Did Jimmy Buffett musical. Oh. She's in Escape to Margaritaville. Margaritaville. It's happening. Lisa. Lisa Howard. She, yeah. you know, she was in the ensemble of, like, South Pacific. And, she, you know, she always sort of has been, like, a, a lead in something. But she's gotten to be in that leading lady because there's been sort of a way in for her. Mm -hmm. But really, like, what she has to do is terrible in that musical people I literally have people reaching out to me telling me about what the plot is because they're so horrified and no I haven't even seen it but they're like oh, we know you'll empathize mm. because of the horrible things she has to do she's the most elegant beautiful person yeah, and by incredible. the way sings her head off and also dances and is a gorgeous actress like there's why couldn't she be a mother and dear Evan Hansen why can't a plus size woman be the lead in waitress who's a pregnant lady who is low it's income. It's very strange. I right. know. I know. I've been thinking about this a lot. I mean, it's we know we're in the middle of a massive representation crisis. This is not news. Like, you, you guys have on your, uh, your promo stuff, like, all the stats about the amount of women who are uh, considered plus size and the reflection in the media. Like, it's a huge issue, and I think it's just about, like, people like you or like me or people who have the opportunity to speak about it, just like hammering it home over and over and over again, that this is a big problem. And that if we don't start to dive, to allow for body diversity, this fat phobia that's been like running our society for yes. all of time is going to continue. And it is incredibly harmful to it's human beings, harmful. to young men and women who are coming up in the world who, who need to see a reflection of themselves in the media. They need to believe the culture says, we see you, we know you exist, and we think your stories have value. Yeah. Because I think that's the biggest thing, is there's a lack of value placed on stories of people who inhabit larger bodies. And yeah. it's just really... Because it's a choice, right? Because, well, like... yeah, I mean, it's... You can't choose to be black, you don't choose to be gay, but you're cho choosing to be fat, is what the percep perception right. is. Right, and what's right. really sad is that it, the more you investigate, I was just listening to a podcast today, um, I'll probably post about it on our uh, Facebook page later, but basically it was talking about, like, the myth about sugar and, like, about sugar addiction and about how... Physically, we do not respond to sugar the way we do to cocaine mm -hmm. or to heroin. That's actually biologically not the same. It's not technically addiction. What it is, however, is an emotional response yeah. that we attach to it because of societal things. Right, right. So it, when you're saying it's harmful, it literally is harmful. Right. Like it, it, And it's not the actual thing. It's not sugar is not harmful. It is the what we put onto sugar. You also don't know why a person's fat. I mean, never. I was a big baby. Baby. It was like nine five, and then I just grew exponentially bigger than my friends throughout the periods of my life. Before I was choosing what to put in my mouth. Yeah, I mean, my parents fed me healthily. I we didn't eat a lot of crap, right. but like, I feel like I was fat at birth, and yeah. I've just always been yeah fat and bigger than my peers, and yeah. that's not. So, and I've spent my entire life trying to change that. Yeah, which is. I've wasted so much energy, yeah. so much time that's and energy. Hard. So on that. much time and so much energy. Is, that's the it, the psychic space it takes up is the thing that is really I think ruining our world. I think that that's why we're not healing. Well, yeah, when the we planet. have five year olds who are concerned about dieting, yeah, yes, that is that's, well, that's like what where they, they talk about the yeah. beauty myth. Amy Wolf's the beauty myth. Yeah. It's like it's given women women specifically uh, this striving for beauty or perfection has given the patriarchy a way to take up more of their brain space yeah. so that they're less powerful. Yeah. And I think that that's a hundred percent. And theater yeah. needs to step the fuck 
Uh, theater of I know of I all theater. places. I theater, we're looking at you. It's hostile. It's a hostile environment for the oh big girl. Oh my god, they're trying. <laughs> if people are trying to tell me, save me from myself with the name of that show. I thank you, thank you, Brian. Thank oh, you. Oh, it's um, um, I can't believe we're so fast. Well, no, it's we have so we have a little bit of oh, time. Oh, we left. do have time left. Yes. We are going to talk about the Me Too conversation. Oh yes, yes. this is rough. Yes, as we take a deep breath. <sighs> That felt good. That felt good. It did feel good. Um, we got we. I got a little Delco. I got a little Monco. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Montgomery County, which is okay. near Delaware County, but okay. not the same. So she's from Uppity Land. It's all right. I'm not oh from really? There. Montgomery County. <laughs> Montgomery so County. Uppity. Bucks uh, County. <laughs> so uppity. <laughs> so uppity. It's like where you go to, to go to farms and get lavender. Yeah, there's farms. Um, <laughs> to get lavender. <laughs> There's cornfields. <laughs> There's like you pick strawberries up there. You take a day trip. Oh um, my gosh, amazing! <laughs> yeah, go up to go up to Skookle and go to New Hope. Um, but, um, New Hope Hunt. Uh, so Hun. there, your fat friend did it again. She wrote another brilliant article. Yeah. I don't know if you have, I have read her other stuff. Yeah. She is just really prolific and honest, and it's not. It's in such a language that feels so yeah. easy. Right? It's not, it really is. It's she's not trying hard. No, she's, she's just trying to explain. Yeah. the real. She's, she's just, just on real. the real real. She's on the real real. And she talks about like what where are the fat voices in the Me Too movement? And she basically lays it out. She's like, people think that we're lucky to have any kind of sexual attention, even if it's terrible. Yeah. And she has like all of these Even if it's rape. Yeah. Yeah. Which is horrific. Absolutely. And <laughs> and the reality is is that I went and thought I look back at my life and stuff that happened to me and like kisses I didn't want to get and people grabbing my ass, mm-hmm. which I didn't want to get at a very young age. Cause me too. Me we've too. talked about that too. Like, because now there's much, many more op- options I feel like, but when you overdevelop young, yeah. you, people think that you're an adult cause you're wearing adult clothes. Totally. So they think you're older you than boobs. you are. <laughs> yeah. You have boobs. Yeah. You're I'm, I'm wearing a size 10 in the women's department when I'm 10. Like people think that you're older than you yeah. are and, and, take advantage anyway but on top of that it, it, you're also made to feel like any attention is good attention yeah. because you're lucky to get any attention right even if it's terrible and we talked about usher um the last year and i'm so glad you enjoyed yeah, it was our take on it it was much lighter um it was before the me too movement i think yeah it was. yeah and um i mean before i should say before we before all, we before all it before it blew up yeah she's been doing it for like a really <laughs> right, long right, time yes. i mean please i will not be an asshole in my <laughs> Like, like it, it just happened. But we but. talked about how Usher was in trouble for um, potentially giving a girl sexually transmitted, sexually transmitted yeah. disease, and how people were so upset about he would how he, he would never have sex with a fat girl. Like yeah. how da- like she's not pretty. She's not like all this stuff about yeah. how Usher would do that. They didn't talk about how Usher had sex with a dude, um, and yeah, how that would be that would be okay. But having sex with a fat yeah, girl there was, was no absurd. outrage over him this machismo very you know tending to be straight imaged guy would was yeah. reportedly a man he did that to a man too yeah. right and nobody blinked at that but a fat, fat, fat person, person is yeah. crazy yeah. so i mean i guess uh, uh, what do you think the answer is i look at the people who are doing this poetry and like it's literally like watching a gaping wound on stage yeah. yes like, it's and it's so beautiful and so powerful and by the way shared seven million times yes. by now yeah. and beautiful I, but I also am like, does it have, like, do we all have to do that? I mean, do we have to, is that how vulnerable we have to be? Is that how risky we have to be? I don't know, because we talked about that a little bit. Like, I don't feel like people have ever said to me, like, oh, I don't believe that this happened to you. But I also know that I have pretty privilege. Right. Like, people assume that, oh, like, you know, that I'm I'm not asexual because I'm pretty. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to a girl who might not be traditionally right. beautiful, it's like a rock gay. Like a rock like yeah, exactly. gay. Or the girl who accused or uh, confronted Usher. Like they're not worthy of sexual attention. And that's that that's the problem. Like why why? Yeah. I think because of this the fat girl stigma of like being undesirable and like we we are asked and challenged to make ourselves as small as possible to fit into the hands of at least in a heteronormative sense to fit into the hands of of men or potential lovers and that if you lose weight or if you make yourself smaller then you get certain rewards one of them is romance because we're also left out of this is another thing about representation right fat women are left out of love and sex narratives almost yeah. completely oh, yeah. in the media i know so we don't have any reason to believe that there are fat women you got women a love interest there. in heathers no. Oh, but my, 
They got him. Because my character's like too cool for even like high school sex. Like she's above everything. Oh, she's I like, oh, it. you have a boyfriend? We can't wait to You're watch so it. You're so boring. Can't, I can't believe we're time, time is up. up. Oh, no. no. We have to go. Wait, but tell people how they can find you really quickly. Okay, so I am basically just on Instagram. I'm learning Twitter, but it's very confusing to me. Twitter is um, I just read it. Just go. Um, but I'm on Instagram, Melanie underscore underscore field. Two underscores. underscores. Two underscores. Thanks, Thanks, man. Man. Melanie Thanks, Field, Thank two underscores. Too. And Heather's <laughs> premieres, we got our new premiere date. It's July 10th on Paramount Network, which is the old Spike TV. It's a, a new network. So. And of Yay! course you can find us at, at Plus, Plus the show, show like, everywhere. Like, subscribe, and share. Share please, with your friends please, if you please. enjoy this. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you for having us. You guys, we have a Mandel account next week. We're so, so excited. excited. And we'll see you back here at Plus This. this.